Well, good morning and welcome back to the workshop. In this video, we're going to try and get the axle boxes fitted into the horns, maybe even get the keeps attached too. So the first thing we need to do is go over to the milling machine and try and get those slots cut. The last time I was using the milling machine, I was surfacing some parts. So the orientation of this vise uh, in, uh, in this axis uh, wasn't critical. This time, however, I really do need to make sure that the slots are parallel to the sides of the pieces. So I'm and of course, I have the milling head in here, and that means I can't be using my edge finders because they need to be held in a collet or in a drill chuck. I've got axle boxes two and four here, uh, and they are exactly the same width uh, down to the thou. So I can put these in like so and get them gang milled. Right, so we edge found against the back and we've now stepped over all of the measurements we need to start the slot in the correct position. Okay, what we've got here is the axle box and I'm gonna place it so that the keep is resting on these parallels. And that's because the keep is now the datum in the vertical axis. I need to ensure that the top faces of all the axle boxes are exactly the same distance from the keep on all four axle boxes. And I've measured it with uh, a mic and they are within about five, 10 thou. Um, if you remember, I had some problems when I was using the horizontal milling cutter when I was slotting them. And it was it was getting hot and it, was, it was, wasn't cutting very well. So uh, this way I will just shave off the top surface to bring them all exactly to the right datum point. Okay, I think this is going to be my setup for drilling the retaining pin for the axle box keeps. The keep is in place with a little toolmaker's clamp holding it there, a bit of wet and dry on here just to take up any sub thousandth of an inch variance in thickness and give a bit of extra grip. I'm squeezing the part this way with the clamp on the on the vise this way and then I have a stop over here and I've got it raised up on some parallels. Okay we edge found off of the side here and off of the back here uh, and moved in halfway this way and then the uh, relevant distance to get three eighths in from this edge. <laughs> Let's see how my wondrous repeatable setup works. Yeah, pretty well. The last dimension, which isn't consistent across every single axle box, is the overall height. Um, and they were, I actually checked these and they were very, very slightly out. I think it's about 10 thou out. Um, so what I'm going to do is uh, arrange them like so and just take a skim cut off the top so they're all exactly the same height. See, for the sake of this video, I was trying not to get my hand in the way. Now I've got to dig it out all the swarf. Nice. And here's my setup for drilling these. So I've got my edge finder here. I'm gonna find the edges and get this uh, bang on this, this line here and then halfway down the middle. Uh, and having done that, I've got my parallels underneath. I've got a stop here, so I'll be able to drill through. I'm gonna start off with the recommendation by Curly Lawrence, which is to put a undersized drill bit for 3 16 and then ream 
3 16 at first, and you can use a 3 16 piece of silver steel uh, across the frames and make sure everything's free running, and if not, you can drift the holes. That doesn't feel very uh, model engineering to me, that feels more like woodworking, but uh, apparently that's how he suggested to do it, so who am I to second guess that guy? This is now bang on. So just need to drill it now, I guess. Well, here we go. Here's the uh, the other axle uh, template, I guess, in place. And you can see it, it rotates pretty freely. This rotates, pretty easy finger pressure. It's, nothing, uh, it's not perfect, uh, but there's nothing that's gonna bind up there or anything like that. I'm really pleased at how this came out. I was so worried about these axle holes and, and bearing in mind all the travails about getting the frames uh, as straight as I could. Um, but as you can see, the axle boxes move smoothly, the axles move smoothly. Um, so I think either I've, uh, it's a broken clock being right twice a day or, I, or I've managed to crack it. But either way, I'm really, really pleased. There are a few more steps to get this to an actual rolling chassis. So rather than making this video extra long, I'm going to stop now because it's been a long couple of days and I will come back to you next time and we'll have this as a rolling chassis by the end of the next video.